How do you make mashed potatoes fluffy and creamy rather than soggy or gluey? In this video, I'll guide you through each step of the cooking process and share science-based tips for those perfect mashed potatoes. Hello friends, I'm Joy Chu, a former scientist turned content creator. And the goal of my YouTube channel is to help home cooks become more confident with science. With Thanksgiving right around the corner, I wanted to create an essential guide for one of my favorite side dishes, mashed potatoes. I know that they're not the fanciest or most complicated part of the Thanksgiving meal, but without a good understanding of the science, you can easily end up with a sad potato paste instead of magically whipped potatoes. So in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to pay attention to and explain the science of why. Here are the five main things I'll be going through. The first thing is the type of potato. The second thing is how you cut the potatoes. The third thing is how you cook the potatoes. The fourth thing is how you process them. And the fifth thing and last thing is the type of liquids and fats that you use. As a bonus, I'll be revealing a common pantry ingredient that will really boost the flavor of your gravy. So you'll want to stick around for the secret ingredient. For people who've watched my videos before, no, it's actually not miso. Now let's get to cooking. The first thing you need to know is that the type of potato you use matters for the texture. There are two types of potatoes, starchy such as russet and waxy such as Yukon gold. You can probably already tell the differences in texture when raw, and this becomes important when they're cooked. When you cook starchy potatoes, the potato cells separate from each other and give a dry, fluffy texture. When you cook waxy potatoes, the cells stick together and release more gelatinized starch, leading to a more moist texture. Since I want the best of both potato worlds, I'll use half starchy, half waxy potatoes. Before I cook them, I'm going to peel and cut one pound total into pieces that are one to two inches long. So here's the second thing you need to know. How you cut the potatoes is important for their flavor and texture. If you cut them too small, the potatoes will absorb too much water and become soggy. And you'll also lose a lot of the starch and other compounds that give the potatoes flavor. If you cut them too large, the potatoes won't cook evenly because the outside will cook faster than the inside. The third thing to be aware of is how you cook the potatoes. After they're all cut, I'm going to put them into a two quart saucepan, then cover them with one and a half quarts of cold water. The water should be cold at the beginning because this allows for more gentle and even cooking as the temperature rises. I'm also adding one tablespoon of table salt for flavor and bringing all of this to a boil. Once I've got the water boiling, I turn down the heat and let the potatoes simmer until close to fork tender. To get rid of excess moisture, I drain all of the water, put the pot back on the stovetop, and turn the heat to high for 30 seconds. Now for the fourth thing. I know it's super tempting to use your food processor or blender to mash these potatoes faster, but here's why you really shouldn't do that. Potatoes are made of cells that contain tight bundles of starch. During the cooking process, the cells absorb water and burst and the starch bundles inside break down and start to interact with water to form a gel-like substance. If you're too forceful with the potato cells, too many cells burst and too much starch interacts with water, leading to that very unpleasant gluey paste. Instead, you'll want to use something more gentle, like a hand masher. Some up and down motions and gentle scraping are sufficient. No need to be heavy handed with the mixing. Now here's the last thing you'll want to keep in mind, the fats and liquids you use. For the best mashed potatoes, you need to use some kind of fat to coat the starch and keep the potatoes from getting gluey. Butter, olive oil, or eggs are some common fats people use. If using butter, you'll also need some liquid for moisture. And there are also some common options here. Heavy cream, whole milk, and almond milk as a non-dairy alternative. To compare these three options, I made three batches of mashed potatoes cooked exactly the same, with the same amount of butter and liquid but with a different type of liquid added to each batch at the end. The batch with heavy cream, which is 35% fat, came out whipped, fluffy, and somewhat moist. The one with whole milk, which is 3.5% fat, was similar to the heavy cream version, but thicker and more moist. The mashed potatoes with almond milk, which is 2% fat, tasted moist, but they weren't as creamy and rich as the other two. So the takeaway is that for indulgent, smooth mashed potatoes, you really need that fat content for the ideal consistency and mouth feel. For the butter and whole milk combo, my personal favorite, 
I gradually incorporate four tablespoons of cold butter cut into half inch pats. Using cold butter distributes the fat and milk solids evenly, so it's better than using melted butter, which already has the fat and solids separated. Once I mix in the butter, I add a quarter cup of warm milk. It's important the liquid is warm to incorporate it evenly and prevent the potatoes from cooling down too much. And for the finishing touch, I season the potatoes with some salt and black pepper to taste. Okay, that ends the part on mashed potatoes. As I promised, I'm going to share the secret ingredient that I use for my gravy. It's light soy sauce. That's right, these packets that you also might be hoarding come in handy here. Soy sauce has something called umami, which is a savory taste activated by the amino acid glutamate. Whether you make a meat-based gravy or one with mushrooms like me, the soy sauce will deepen and enhance those meaty flavors. So here's how I make my gravy. I first brown eight ounces of cremini mushrooms with two tablespoons of olive oil. To successfully brown them, the mushrooms have to release all of their moisture first, and then they'll get to a high enough temperature for the actual browning to happen. When the mushrooms are browned, I add two tablespoons of flour as a thickening agent, and mix until it coats the mushrooms and browns as well. Next, I pour in the chicken broth, first about half cup to combine everything evenly, and then add the rest. Next, I add one tablespoon of my secret ingredient and sprinkle in dried thyme. I cook this down a medium low until the gravy thickens. At the end, I add another tablespoon of soy sauce, and for even more umami, I sometimes add some dried shiitake mushroom powder, which is basically concentrated mushroom flavoring. And now it's time to taste. So what I'm having here is the mashed potatoes with butter and whole milk with a little bit of the mushroom gravy. Bon appétit. These mashed potatoes are really creamy and they have a little bit of that tangy milk taste, which is really nice. And the mushroom gravy just adds a punch of savoriness and umami that of course, I really enjoy, and it adds so much flavor to the potatoes, too. Thanks for watching. To get the full recipe with notes, subscribe to my free Substack newsletter. If you enjoyed this video and want to keep learning more about the science of everyday cooking, like and subscribe to my channel below. Have a happy and delicious Thanksgiving, and I'll see you soon. Happy Thanksgiving.